You now want to get to the rapidly developing story about Rudy Farias, the teen who disappeared eight years ago. Today we saw him for the first time since he was found on Sunday. We have team coverage this evening. KPRC 2's Corley Peel outside the family home in Northeast Harris County. And KPRC 2 Mario Diaz is live at a hotel near Bush Airport where Rudy and his mother left within the last two hours. Mario, what have you been able to find out? Well, Keith, let me tell you something. As you indicated, this has been a rapidly developing day, and we do know that HPD plans on holding a news conference tomorrow morning with detectives directly tied to this case. This comes after what took place behind me here at this hotel throughout the course of the afternoon, and that is Rudy Farias meeting with HPD detectives. I heard horrific things from that young man. Quan LX meeting with the media hours after he, along with detectives from HPD's missing persons unit, met with Rudy Farias one on one. Quan L says that Farias clearly told him and HPD that he has been living at home with his mother all this time and that his mother purposely made it appear that he was nowhere to be found. Whenever the investigators would come, she would hide him in the house. Rudy, who X described was coherent, met with investigators for a couple of hours this afternoon. When she was in the room, he wouldn't say nothing. He wouldn't say one word when she was in the room. According to Quan Alex, his mother attempted to interrupt the interview process three times. They took her to another room and kept her there for a minute after he had confided with us what was said. And X says Farias provided great details. Once the news emerged that his mother allegedly kept him hidden for eight years, family members of Rudy showed up upset and wanting answers. She need to go to jail today. Right now, if right I, now. I don't care if I gotta take my cousin home to stay with me for a couple of days, I'll take him home. We're here for that you know reason. Mean? That's not right what she did to him. Hey everyone, this is Sunny Justice with It's a Criming Shame. Now, of course, before we get started into this video, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell for any time that we do a live or drop a video. And if you do not mind, please give this video a like and a share. It really does help out and we appreciate it so much. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about Rudy Ferrarias. And this is about the boy who went missing in March of 2015 supposedly as we are learning more about this story and now it's 2023 and rudy of course has been found so let's get into what happened to rudy okay so rudolph rudy ferias four was by all accounts a normal teenage boy he liked hanging out with his friends taking walks in the parks sometimes by himself and sometimes with his two dogs that he loved like many kids, he was asthmatic, but he didn't let that stop him, nor did his injured right leg, which gave him a slight limp. But Rudy also suffered from depression and post-traumatic stress disorder and anxiety. At one point, he actually tried to take his own life. In March 2015, the disappearance and subsequent discovery in June this year shocked Houston, Texas community and the whole nation. The misting poster for then the 17 year old boy paints an endearing picture of his life, but also his afflictions. So published by the Texas EquiSearch, one of the organizations that scoured the city for Rudy when he went missing, the flyer reads, it is possible he is disorientated and he has not been taking any of his medication. According to his mother, he was very wary around strangers. Rudy's last known location at the time of his disappearance was near Tidwell and Park Drives in Houston. He had been walking his dogs around 6.30 p.m. on Friday, March 6 of 2015, and he was wearing blue jeans, a black t-shirt, gray cotton gloves, brown shoes, the flyer had said. Authorities found the dogs immediately after their um, investigation began, but Rudy wasn't with them. He was eventually found on a stoop behind a local church, unresponsive, with several cuts and bruises and blood in his hair. That was on Thursday, June 29th, more than eight years after his disappearance. When first responders arrived and examined Rudy, he was in bad shape and was completely nonverbal, leading the police to suspect abuse. 
He also curled into a fetal position any time the authorities or his mother, Janie Santana, tried to talk to him. He was taken to the local hospital, then released into his mother's care. Houston police may set the record straight about the disappearance of Rudy Farias. He was 17 years old when he reportedly disappeared back in 2015. Yeah, that's after today's shocking allegations that Farias's mother faked his disappearance and has been hiding him the whole time. Tonight, relatives are reacting to those accusations and talking to our Grace White, who joins us live at the hotel near Bush Airport, where today's bombshell was dropped. This hotel is where Quan Alex says he met with Rudy, his mother, and Houston police. We actually had an interview set up with Rudy's mom, Janie Santana, but after these allegations broke, she sped away from our cameras, and now we're waiting for Houston police to see what they have to say. I'm going to oh, say I'm very worried about Rudy. <laughs> very worried. Pauline Sanchez Rodriguez is fighting back tears. I didn't want to get involved, but with my daughter, my oldest is mom come. Worried about her nephew, Rudy Varias. After activist Quan Alex held a press conference this afternoon saying Rudy hasn't really been missing for eight years. He kept saying, I just, I don't want her to go to prison. I don't want her to go to prison. Quan L says it was Rudy's mother, Janie Santana, that called him for help this morning. He says Santana asked him to come to this hotel where she and Rudy were planning to meet with Houston police. But when Quan L arrived, what he says Rudy told detectives was heartbreaking. She would ask him to play daddy. She told him that he had to be the husband. She would force him to sleep in the bed with her. According to Quan L, Rudy told detectives his mother hid him in her house, gave him drugs, and physically and sexually abused him. All while Quan L says she was profiting off his disappearance by raising money for the search. I've never seen Rudy since the day he went missing. Sylvia Lopez is another aunt who says over the years she even traveled out of state with Santana to look for her son. And she had me out there in California thinking that they had found somebody that looked like Rudy in California and I went all the way with her. These are just unbelievable accusations today, Grace. Have Houston police said anything at all about this? Lynn, Houston police said in a tweet they're expecting to hold a press conference tomorrow on Rudy's case, but tonight they weren't ready to comment on these allegations and if any of these allegations are factual. Rudy's mom right now is not facing any charges. Of course, we'll be there tomorrow. Okay, so here's an article that were, was released by Houston police on their Facebook and by Twitter. It says, detectives with our missing persons unit interviewed Mr. Rudy Farias, 25, and his mother today. While there are reports of some of the content of the interviews being released, our detectives are not in a position at this time to discuss specifics of the interviews or if the content being released is entirely factual. Media partners detectives will be available to discuss this of this case sometime tomorrow, which is today, July 6, at HPD headquarters. No other information is being released before the news conference. We will provide the time of the newser here once it is determined. Now let's listen to a little bit of the Quinnell interview that he gave and I'm going to drop the link in the description of this video for the full one. It's one of those ones you guys that I don't really want to play the whole thing. It's quite long but again it's very interesting so and we'll be interested to see what happens and transpires today. I think that most people that are watching this case and paying attention to it are very upset with what has transpired and what they've learned. So hopefully we'll have some more details and information as the day goes on. I heard horrific things from that young man. And I did not want him to see me start shedding tears, but I couldn't hold back the tears because of the things he was saying to us. Continue hiding. And so she hid him out for a while, then brought him back to the house and hid him in the home. And initially, whenever the investigators would come, she would hide him in the house. And um, he kept saying, I don't want her to go to prison. I don't want her to get in trouble. I don't want her to go to jail. 
And so we asked him, why did you run away? And he said he just got tired of her not respecting his boundaries. And she said that he wanted his own life. And his exact word was, I was tired of living like a slave. She would take him to work with her and he would do the required work she was supposed to do. And a lot of the responsibilities of her job was on him. And he went on to say that what troubled him the most was her crossing his personal space boundaries. He said that she would make him sleep in the bed with her. That's a damn shame, man. A little boy said she was the one providing drugs to him for years. Hallucin hallucination drugs, mushrooms, etc. And that the reason why he was left, he was just tired of her crossing his boundaries when he would shower, she would come and pull the shower curtain back and stare at him and then she would make him bathe her with the soap. And he ran away this time because he was tired. Well, now, he's been doing this for many years. How emotional did you go through with this case? It's a goddamn shame. I ain't never in my life heard of a mother doing to a child what this woman did. Were you at all there when the mother was questioned? I mean, yes. And what was her reaction? When yes. Her? And she, I knew something was wrong with the story when she was questioned. When he got, when, he went, when they found him, he had her credit card in his pocket. She just canceled that credit card two and a half years ago. So if he's been missing for eight years, how the hell he get your credit card in, your, in his pocket when they found him from two and a half years ago? What she mean? And he said to us, that she gave him that credit card so he could go and buy her certain but, things. But with the other allegations, what was her response to those allegations? She hadn't even heard them because we had to remove her from the room. But did she, so she hasn't been questioned about that? Can you describe her demeanor and his demeanor during questioning? When she was in the room, he wouldn't say nothing. He wouldn't say one word when she was in the room. But the minute she left the room and we were allowed to talk to a young man, and he asked. He said, can I speak with Mr. X by myself? Can I talk to one of by myself? And the detective was like, well, can one of us stay in the room? And he was like, okay, but, but I'll talk to him. So when she left, he, when he first came here, he was holding on to her. He wouldn't talk to him. He wouldn't say one word to anybody. Like he was petrified. But the minute he got alone by himself, he slowly calmed down. And he slowly began to talk very coherently and specific details. This is a man in his mid-20s. People might wonder, why not run away from this situation? Why not get yourself out of it? Did he give you any explanation about that? I honestly believe, based on what he said to us, she was drugging the hell out of this kid. And she convinced him that he was in trouble for initially running away and that law enforcement wanted to arrest him and put him in jail for running away. She had convinced him that all type of agencies were looking for him to put him in jail. He was in plain sight, according to you, and that he would take her to work. No, he, would, he would go to work with her. Right. He would, take, he would stay at the job with her. She would take him to work. Where did she work and where was he doing this it was, work? It was some kind of security job or something like that. Where they were at, I don't know, but it was a security type job, how a nighttime he, security watch type job. How did he end up in the church? <sighs> we still can't. He admitted that, that, he, that he had took mushrooms, okay? And two weeks before this, or a week of, maybe not even official, whole two weeks, her car was stolen, okay? When her car was stolen, she didn't know how the car was stolen, but the keys were in the car. And he stole the car. That's when he got to the accident in the car. And it was him that got into the accident in that car. What was the story? I mean, this is eight years he was reported missing. What's the story that he's been? I spoke to neighbors who said um, he went by Dolph, but he never kind of told anyone she, what happened. What was his story? Because she had convinced him that he was in so much trouble for initially running away. And she gave this boy serious drugs to the point to where this boy needs extensive professional help. What was How did he stay missing for so long? I mean, eight years. He was allowed to um, visit with some of the neighbors under an assumed name. She believed that after so many years, people had forgotten about the case and that under an assumed name and convinced him to use that name, nobody would put two and two together. But he never told any of the people that he was with what was happening? Never told anybody what was going on. And let me say this. That young man's body has scars all over it. 
slice wounds from here, from literally to his forearm to his wrist. All type of scars on his kid. And he said that she often locked him in the room, that she would give him drugs and lock him in the room. And there's a whole lot of uh, mental health issues there, I believe, induced because of the drugs that this young man was well, given. At any point during this process today, did you see the mother detained by HPD? They took her to another room and kept her there for a minute after he had confided with us what was said. I know they were on the phone with the DA's office and their superiors about this case, but I want everybody to know something. This young boy was not kidnapped by some strangers and he got away and they found him. That's not the case here. You know, this happened on Thursday and we're nearly a week later and investigators waited almost a week to speak to him. Hearing the story that you heard, is it a concern that they waited this long to hear from him given the story that you were told? It seems like he's had eight years of dealing with this and now another week. I was shocked that they have not done more. I was shocked that they had not executed a search warrant on the home. I was shocked by that. And I said, don't you all think you need to get busy and execute a search warrant on that home? And the young man made it crystal clear to us that that's where he was, in the house. But he was living under this fake assumed name. Do you think police failed in this situation? Oh, big time. No doubt about it. Absolutely they did. Because there, was, there, was, there were several instances where calls were made about him to law enforcement, and they did not properly follow up and follow through based on the history of that address. Because she hadn't changed addresses. And our residents were saying this morning that she brought bags and she was trying to leave. Do we know something about she that? She was trying to do what? She was trying to leave the house. She was trying to leave the house? She did leave the house. So she was trying and to escape? She, left, she did leave the house and she was trying to get away from the house, yes. Why was she at this hotel? Uh, she said she felt that she was not safe going home because she had been receiving threats. What now? Is the police investigation over? Where are they? I can't say what's, at what state their investigation is. But what I can say it ain't no way in hell that woman shouldn't be locked up immediately and that boy needs to go to the best drug rehab and best psychological mental health facility that we can find for him. He's a good kid. He's a good kid. That kid was just severely abused. And what was the mother's reaction when you brought these stories to her? I couldn't go back in the presence at that point. The police felt it was just best that she and I not speak again she, because so I was bitter. Is she aware of these that the son told you? Yes, yeah, she's aware. And then she goes back in there and tries to tell him, and she don't even know that was recorded. Tell him, tell him that you made it all up. That it was just a lie. You said she would, he, she would ask him to play daddy. Can you just, um, she was sexually abused? She would ask him to play daddy. She told him that he had to be the husband. She would force him to sleep in the bed with her. And he was forced to sleep at times in the beds with no clothes on. Was anything and else really done? Yes. But I don't want to talk about the kissing and all of that stuff. And but he was telling you that there was some sort of sexual action that was happening between him and you. If your mother tongue kissing you in the bed with her naked, what the hell is that? I mean, damn, dude, do we have to go that far? That's, that's, what, the, that's what happened. This is sick. One L, this ain't normal. This is sick. 1L, if these allegations are true. I understand the position you're in. If they are true, how long before you think there's an arrest? Based on what that young man said to me in front of the detective, I don't see why she's not in handcuffs right now. I don't see why she's not in handcuffs right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, don't forget, everyone, and of course, these are allegations by Rudy. At this time, Janie has not been prosecuted or arrested for any wrongdoing. So let's see what will happen at the press conference today when they talk about Rudy Ferrarias. Anyways, God bless to anyone that is feeling the pain and tragedy of this story. Please give this video again a like and a share. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. And you guys, always prayer to keep our children safe amongst the monsters of this world.